Hello, AP Stats. Hope you guys are having a fantastic day. I know I am. It's Friday night at 8.40 p.m. Guess what I'm doing? Making a stats video. So anyways, today we're moving on to 412 um, in the practice of statistics, which is uh, talking about methods of sampling. So in the last video, which was 411, we talked about like bad sampling and how you can get biased when you're sampling poorly. Um, and so today we're going to talk about like better ways to sample, like what you should do. Um, <clears throat> so our SOBAT for today is to describe, we're going to use table D, which is like a table of random numbers. Um, we're going to talk about how to use that to create uh, a random sample. And we're also going to talk about what a simple random sample is, a stratified random sample, a cluster sample. We're even going to talk about a systematic sample, which is not on the list but it's also something we're going to do, um, and we'll kind of talk about some advantages and disadvantages of each method. Um, so random sampling is a really, really, really important part of uh, the process of sampling. Um, it has to be random. And basically, the idea behind random sampling is that it's the process of using chance to decide or select whatever your sample is. Um, because no matter what you think you're doing, if you are selecting people or you're selecting individuals or selecting subjects for a study, you are not choosing randomly. Um, when, um, now let's be honest, like you can't actually really have anything that's like 100% random because even random number generators like on your calculator or on Google, they follow an algorithm, <clears throat> and so, um, but they're still better than you. Sorry, no offense, but they are. They're closer to being random. Um, so anyways, uh, random sampling is the process to use chance uh, to decide the sample. Okay, so um, the most basic form of random sampling is called the simple random sample, hence the name. Um, but there's two things that are important about a, a simple random sample. Okay, one is that um, each individual has the same chance of being selected, but also every sample of a particular size that you set in the beginning. Like so, every every sample of size 10, for example. Oh no, close low battery. Um, also has the same chance of being selected. So this is equivalent to writing all the names down on equal size sheets of paper and folding them up, putting them in a hat, and like mixing well and just like picking out names um, because there's no um, methodology behind it other than just picking the names. Um, and so every sample of size 10 or of size 5 has the same chance of being selected. Um, and every individual as well has the same chance of being selected. Shorthand is SRS, so anytime you see SRS, that means simple random sample. Okay, so there's a random number table that you can use to collect um, a simple random sample, um, or actually any type of random sample, I'll show you later. Um, but basically, <clears throat> what you want to do is you need to plan ahead a little bit. You need to figure out how many, um, how many individuals you want in your sample. Do you want five individuals in your sample, or do you want 500? Um, because that changes how many digits you're looking at. So the idea is with a random number table, every line is just a set of random digits. Um, and usually, um, like on a test or something, they'll give you like numbers, like they'll number the lines as like line one, two, three, four, and so on. Um, and they'll tell you to start at line three or something. Um, and get a sample just so that there's like consistency for grading. But the idea is you pick a line, it, any line that it, that doesn't really matter, but you pick a line and then you go through the numbers that are in there. And um, so let's say for example, I have 30 people in my class and I'm interested in studying the entire, the you know, the people in my class. So my entire group size is 30 but I want a sample of like, I don't know, 12 for some experiment. 
Okay, um, typically the sample size we denote as n, um, n equals 12, okay? But I have 30 people in my class and that is my population, okay? And so basically, what I want to do is I want to figure out um, how many digits I need to use. Because the problem is, if I were to just start, right, remember I have 30 people in my class, and I were to look and say, okay, the first person is 8, the next person is person 4, the next person is person 17. The problem is 17 has a 1 in 100th chance of being selected, and 8 and 4 have a 1 in 10 chance of being selected. So those individuals don't have the same probabilities of being selected, so that is not going to work. So basically what you have to do is if you have like more than 10 in your sample, which we do, we have 12, we need to number people from like 0, 1 to 30. So I would label all the people in my class from 0, 1 to 30, two digits. That's what's really important. And if we wanted, if we had like 500 people, we would do three digits, so 0, 0, 1. Okay, so I label my students 0, 1 to 30, and then I select 12 of them from the table. So basically, I'm going to go and I start at the top left corner, and I look at the first two digits, 84. That is not a student, like, that won't be a label on a student that I have. But the next number, 17, will. So 17 is the first individual in my sample. Then I go to the next one, and I have to kind of bridge that, that gap there. Um, but 70, again, is not in my population, so I don't use that. 67, I don't use. 57, I don't use. 17 is a repeat. So I have to make sure that I decide when I'm when I'm doing my experiment or my um, and I'm selecting my sample, I need to determine what do I do with repeats. So in this case, my repeats um, I ignore repeats. Okay, you do have to like state that when you're designing um, a, a survey or a sample, like you're when you're designing your experiment or your survey. Ignore repeats, okay? So then I go back up, and so 17's out again, 61's out again, 31's out, 55's out, 82's out, and I just keep going. I keep crossing, I keep crossing when it's below, when it's above 30. My next one's 14, okay? So 14 would be my next individual. Um, and, and then you keep going. So you can go ahead if you want to practice um, and go ahead and select a few more. Um, I will do the same, but for sake of time, not on a video. So just from the first line, I already have like six people in my sample. I have 17, 14, 5, 9, 20, and 6. Um, and then I would just keep going to the, to the next row here. Um, I would go to 59 and then 88 and 43 until I had all the people that I want in my sample. So if I want 12, I would need six more. Okay, but I'm not going to go through all that. But, but that's the idea with the random number table. Um, you can also get random numbers using a random number generator on your calculator. You could also do it in Google um, or, you know, just find a random number generator online. Uh, but I'm going to show you how to do it in your calculator. So pull out your graphing calculator. Also, you should pull out your ice cream because stats is always better with ice cream. But you're going to go to um, math, probability, and then rand int. Okay. So math, probability, and rand int. And basically what that is saying is it's asking for a random integer. Um, and it asks you for your lower bound, upper bound, and the number of values you want. So in my case with the students, my lower bound is 1, my upper bound is 30 because I have 30 students, and I want 12. The problem is there, there may be repeats, um, and so you just would do this again. Okay, so in this case my sample would be 19, 4, 8, 24, 15, 29, 8, 15 again, 8 got, you know, 8's a repeat, 15's a repeat, so you, you would have to like figure out the repeats that you have and just kind of do it again until you have enough random numbers to make up your sample. Side note, if you have a TI-83 or an older computer or an older calculator, 
Um, it won't ask you for a lower bound and upper bound and n. Um, you just have to put it in. So it'll show up with the rand int and a parentheses. And then you have to type it in in this order with the commas. Um, and then you, you'll end up getting the same thing. Okay, so the last way to get a simple round example is uh, using a hat. And like I said earlier, it's important that so you write everybody's name on a, on a piece of paper, um, you put them in the hat, um, but it's important to mention that all the pieces of paper have to be the same size, and um, you have to have, um, you have to mix the names well, right? Because you can't just have like the ones that you put in last, maybe the last names in the alphabet, um, those would be on the top, so you have to mix well. And also, the big piece, of, a bigger piece of paper will have a higher probability of being selected than a smaller piece of paper. So this is kind of like actually more of a pain in the butt than using a random number generator. Okay, there's three other sampling methods that we're going to go over. So stratified random sample um, classifies the population into groups um, called strata, um, and they're based off of a similar characteristic. So maybe you put um, all the people with blonde hair in a group, and all the people with brown hair in a group, and all the people with red hair in a group, and all the people with black hair in a group, and so on. Um, and then from each of those groups, you take a few random individuals. Um, and what that does is it gets some representative of all different hair types. Um, and so you see that in this uh, situation here, in this little visual. The idea with this one is, right, that you'd randomly select maybe two of each group. Um, so that's kind of what I did here by circling, like, two of the green open circles and two of the green closed circles. Um, so basically they're broken up into strata, and then you randomly select within the strata. Okay, a cluster random sample basically takes the population and divides it into smaller groups, each of which should kind of be representative of the population. Um, so, for example, if you had, like, a huge bag of Skittles, um, and then you took out, like, I don't know, you split it up in, like, 20 different bowls, um, each one of those bowls would be a cluster, um, and then you would randomly select, like, three of the bowls, okay, and then you'd, like, count how many reds there are, and count how many greens there are, um, if you're studying, like, the percentage of colors of Skittles. Um, and so um, this one uh, is kind of a visual of that. So each one of those clusters should kind of be representative of the population. And then you randomly select maybe like two of those groups. And all of the individuals in those clusters are selected for your sample. And last but not, well, kind of least. We don't really use it very often. Um, and it's not really the best method. Anyways is the uh, systematic sample. And the systematic sample is basically like you sample every nth person that walks in the door. You sample every tenth person who walks into the doors of Dawson and ask them, hey, how many hours of sleep did you have last night? Something like that. Um, and so this is the visual for that, right? You kind of like would select every fifth person or whatever you end up doing um, for your sample. And that number should be a randomly selected number. And there you have it. So those are the different ways that you can randomly sample. Um, uh, if you'd like, you can go ahead and try those examples. Um, and we can talk about them in class. Um, just a side thought here, um, the whole idea with the simple random sample being that um, every sample has an equal chance of being selected. The reason that's different from like a stratified random sample is like say for example you split the group up into your blondes, your brunettes, your you know, um, you could in theory um, with the simple random sample have a sample that's all blondes or just blondes and brunettes and no redheads and no black haired students and no blue haired students and um, and so that you could um, get with a simple random sample but you would not get that with the stratified so you're missing out of, on some samples 